Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, this afternoon we're looking at what the title when the fisherman when, when the fishermen don't fish. When what? The fishermen don't fish. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 19. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Okay. Okay. Amen. The Bible says, and he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you what? Fishers of men. And the title says, When the fishermen don't fish. I was going through, I was online, and I stumbled into the story about uh, a group of fishermen who never really fished. They only talk about fishing. They held conferences about fishing. They end endlessly analyze fishing methodologies, but they never fish. Praise the Lord. One day, an outsider attended one of their meetings and went out and caught some fish. And he came to tell the group that, you know what, what I learned here, I practiced it and I got a fish. And they got so excited that they made him the leader. And after a while, he also stopped fishing. Praise the Lord. When the fishermen don't fish. Let me tell you, let me stress what will happen to the fisherman that doesn't fish. Number one, he will lack. The meaning is this. For every fisherman, when he goes, maybe for those who come from the river Rhine area, will appreciate what I'm trying to bring about. You will discover every fish are not one, every fish are not of the same value. Yes or no? Hello? Hi. Amen. Amen. Not all fish have the same value. Some fishes have value. Uh, how many of us know, uh, we call it titles? The European call it the Spanish mackerel. Do we know it? Yes. Is, does it have the same value with the catfish? No. And now, the fisherman who wants money and who wants the same effort, there are some fish you can catch in the night. There are some in the day. Praise the Lord. That means, if a fisherman does not fish, what will happen to him? I said he will lack. One, because his source of, uh, the main source of income for a fisherman is fishing. And if he decides not to fish, not to catch any fish, let me tell you this. When you wake up in the morning, the wife will tap him. Daddy, we need money to buy food. Yes or no? Yes. And the fisherman look at the wife and say, what money? He said, we have to eat and we have to look after your children. So that means, if the fisherman decides not to fish, he will only end up in luck. Number one. Number two, if a fisherman fails to fish, it will become rusty. Maybe you did not know. There is no trade in this world. If you cease to practice it, what will you become? Rusty. You will forget things. You will not remember your practice again. Even if you're a medical doctor, after a while, somebody comes to you and they say, you know what, I have this problem. Before you know it, maybe instead of giving prastamol, you're giving ibrovine. And the person has taken a lot of ibrovine and look at you and say, ah, Pastor, uh, doctor, I'm not feeling the way, maybe my body is shaking. And they're, they're, that is because of what? He is rust. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lastly, if a fisherman does not fish, another thing that will happen, he will not have security. Meaning is this, what is security? Security is most of the time, after people have paid all their bills, if you raise money, you pay all your bills, you have little savings. That savings is security, just in case you go on the street. And for no reason, you could lie with a girl carrying eggs. Praise the Lord. How many of us will lie? If God bless us, and then you're going on the street and you could lie with somebody that, that carry egg, and the whole egg. You know the next thing that will come from the mouth is how much? Yes. But if you're a fisherman that doesn't fish, so does not have money, what happened is this. The next thing is, is either you prostrate flat or you go on your knees. When 
he shall make bold fish. By now, you should have an idea of who the fishermen, the fishermen are and who are not fishing. Maybe some of us are still thinking, what parable is Pastor talking about? Mark chapter 1, verse 17. Mark chapter 1, verse 17. And Jesus said unto them, Okay. Okay. And I will make you Amen. Amen. Can we all read it together? Are we there? It's on the screen, right? Let's go. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers. Who are the fishers of men now? So far, you are born again. Praise the Lord. So far, you are what? So far, you are desiring to make heaven. You are what? You are not just called. You are not, not some of us thought and just called and, 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 and been asked and forced to come to church. No. The master also requires something from me and you. Praise the Lord. And the desire of the master is that you and me will become what? A fisher man. That fishers of men. And I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. You know, some of us, we have all these great contacts in our phone. And we have all these wonderful emails. We have all the Facebook chat and everything. And then we have all the Twitter, Snapchat. We have everything in our, our boxes. And all those contacts with us, we don't use them. How many of us have read the book of Ezekiel for Ezekiel 33? Let's go there. You might discover... Now maybe from today, you will start having a change of mind. Ezekiel 33, verse 1 to 4. Let somebody help us. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, okay. Son of man, okay. speak to the children of your people, okay. and say to them, okay. When I bring the sword upon the land, okay. and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman. Okay. When he sees the sword coming upon the land, okay. if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, okay. then whoever hears the sound of the tru trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and take him away, his blood shall be on his own head. Thank you, man. The book of Ezekiel is a book of uh, the watchman. Some of us may not really realize what this is. This is only talking about us. Let me ask from the part of the world where we came from, and from the southwest in Nigeria, uh, Yoruba boy. Uh, and I know there's something we call vigilante. Yeah. I don't know what they call it in other part. Mommy, do we have vigilante in Sierra Leone? Yeah. Is it, is it everywhere? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Okay, there's some common, okay, even the English call it neighborhood boy. Yeah. What the Bible is saying here is this. You know, all those people you get to know, Oh, Sister Ramona, in the Caribbean, do you have vigilante too? Brilliant. Now, all those neighbors, all those contacts you have, all those people you knew, that you fail to tell them about Jesus. You fail to tell them about the love of God. You know what you're doing? The Bible says in 4, look at, if you read Ezekiel 34, it said, uh, let me take you, it said, if when he sees the sword come upon the land, that means whatever Trouble is about to come. You that no more is expected to blow the trumpet and tell them trouble coming. Maybe you didn't know. You are expected to tell them Jesus is coming. And if you fail to tell them, then you are keeping their contact. You are, they are your friends. You know, there is difference between you tell them they don't listen. That's two different things. How many of us realize many times you see me say words like, your blood is not on my no, I'm washing myself clean. I've told you the truth. I agree, I won't force you. You don't agree, I won't force you. But the funniest thing is, I have told you the truth. You believe it, you don't believe it, but I've told you the truth. And I've told you also, your blood is not what? On my head. You are expected, it's a must for all of us, to make sure, because you should realize all those contacts you have. You know, to some of us, we always think it is by our wisdom. You know, some of